I'm standing beside a playset that I built for our daughter when she was just three years old. Well, that was 15 years ago. Eight for the Road is dedicated to her as she's about to enter her freshman year of college. It's also published for every young man and woman to help them move into adulthood with the peace, presence, and promises of Jesus. So, what does every child need for a smooth transition on the road to adulthood? I wanna give you eight principles for a successful and meaningful journey. Here's the first one. Love God and love others. Jesus identified loving God and loving others as the greatest commandments. And he explained that everything hangs on them. So starting here is essential. Your love for God is intended to be dynamic, never static. So keep growing and learning, seeking to know and love him more because his love for you is limitless. The Passion Translation of Psalm 103, verse 17 says this, But Lord, your endless love stretches from one eternity to the other, unbroken and unrelenting toward those who fear you and those who bow face down in awe before you. Your faithfulness to keep every gracious promise you've made passes from parents to children to grandchildren and beyond. Hey, the greatest commandments are always connected. Uh, loving God enhances your love for others. And loving others, well, that demonstrates that your love for God is authentic. They also indicate that your worship is true, your study of God's Word is accurate, and your prayers are sincere. So stand on these two things love God and love others. They provide the solid footing you need as you grow into adulthood. Number two, be confident and compassionate. Now, the right kind of confidence comes from understanding and believing what God says about you. John 1 verses 12 and 13 says this, to all who did receive him, and that's talking about Jesus, uh, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. So you should never wonder if you measure up because God has given you the right to be his child. You didn't earn it or deserve it, but God highly values you and gives you this right by His grace. This is your identity. It enables you to be courageous and kind as you extend genuine compassion to others. You know, when Jesus looked at the crowds, the scriptures say He had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. So ask God to help you see people like Jesus. Now, you don't have to switch off confidence to be compassionate, and you don't have to switch off compassion to be confident. You can be confident without being arrogant and compassionate without being a pushover. Here's a third principle. Go beyond what is expected. Go beyond what's expected. Surprise people by exceeding their expectations. Not to show off, but to glorify God because of what He has done for you. Colossians 3.17 says this, Whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. So always ask yourself, uh, when you do anything, <laughs> would I put the name of Jesus on this? Think like Jesus. He said, if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them two miles. Uh, so go beyond what's expected in, in the way you live and learn, the way you work and serve, the way you give and forgive. And don't settle for fine. 
aim at excellence and always consider how you can go the extra mile. You see, when you exceed expectations, you demonstrate the gospel without even saying a word. And that's why Jesus said, freely you have received, now freely give. It earns you the right to be heard. People will listen to what you say because they see something irresistible in the way you live. Number four, be faithful in the little things. Being faithful and responsible, well, that proves that you're trustworthy and prepares you for even more responsibility. It starts with the small things. Uh, as a child, uh, you learn to be responsible in things like manners at the table, brushing your teeth, taking a bath, and keeping your room clean. As you grow, you're given more responsibility for helping around the house, getting ready for school, and doing your homework. Then learning to drive and the freedom that comes with getting your license, well, that brings a whole new level of responsibility and accelerates the transition into adulthood. At this level, your safety and the safety of others is impacted by how responsible you are. Uh, being on time, well, that communicates respect and that you value the time of others. Your appearance is also important, so the mirror can be your friend without becoming your master. This is how life works. Uh, Jesus said, whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much, and whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. Faithfulness in the little things, well, that's actually a very big thing that will help you transition into adulthood well. Number five, die to live. <laughs> die to live. Well, that sounds like a contradiction, but it's true. Jesus said, whoever finds their life will lose it, and whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. This principle draws you into the deep end of your faith. You won't find it splashing around in the shallow waters of the kiddie pool. And it keeps you from feeling entitled, expecting others to always adjust to you. Jesus also said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. Hey, remember that word daily. You see, this isn't a one and done experience. Uh, it's not something you do annually or seasonally. Choose to die to yourself and follow Jesus daily. Think different, renew your mind, die to live. Romans 12, one and two puts it this way. Offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Here's a sixth principle. Stay teachable. It doesn't matter how old you are or how much education you have. There's always more to learn. You see, school is always in session, and we learn by listening, observing, and doing. Now, you have two ears, two eyes, but only one mouth. So, listen and observe twice as much as you speak. Teachability requires humility. So, learn to ask questions and ask for help. It'll save you time, frustration, money, and pain. Stretch yourself and try new things because you never know if you'll like something or be good at something unless you try. And it's okay to try and fail. Uh, you didn't learn to ride a bike or drive a car on your first attempt. You did it again and again until it felt natural and became part of who you are. Uh, failure is actually a good teacher if you handle it well. 
It teaches you what it means to persevere. Uh, some of the most successful people who made the most valuable contributions to the world experienced multiple failures before they achieved success. Now, when you stop learning, your growth is stunted and your world gets very small. So stay teachable. Number seven, fight for margin. Fight for margin. Uh, you have 52 weeks in a year, seven days in a week, and 24 hours in a day. Everyone has the same amount of time, but we all manage it differently based on our personalities and our background. You need to know your bandwidth and how much you can handle responsibly. Margin is about living with leftovers, uh, reasonable amounts that are left over from whatever is required. Uh, for instance, uh, when we're driving, we leave space or margin between us and the car in front of us so we can stop safely. Uh, if it requires about 10 minutes to make it to a class or a meeting, allowing 15 would give you five minutes of margin. Uh, the same principle applies to our money and our calendar. Now, there are times when we may need to pack more into our schedule or stretch with our income, but these times should be the exceptions, not the norm. Be intentional and fight for margin. Create space to cultivate your love for God and others, because without margin, these relationships are compromised. Ephesians 5, 15 through 17 tells us to be wise about all these things. It says, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. And finally, Principle number eight, practice grace and truth. You'll need grace and truth to help you navigate through an imperfect world. Apply them first to yourself when you fail. Uh, Romans eight verse one says, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Now our human reflex when we sin is to run away from God, but the truth is, there is no sin too big for God to forgive. And when you correctly apply God's grace and truth, you'll run to Him instead of away from Him. The truth of His grace is this, God will always love you no matter what. Jesus is described as being full of grace and truth. It's a beautiful balance that allowed him to be in the midst of a broken world and love others without compromise. Like confidence and compassion, you don't have to switch off truth to access grace, and you don't have to switch off grace to access truth. Being full of grace and truth is why Jesus is described as a life-giving spirit. And his Holy Spirit lives in you so you can be an extension of that same life-giving spirit of grace and truth. Now, God's goal for parents is not to raise children, but to raise adults and to release them into the world like, like arrows to be difference makers. This season of your life brings lots of freedom and independence that if managed correctly, can help you transition well into adulthood. These eight proven principles will deepen your relationships with God and others as you learn to live for something greater than yourself. And you'll never outgrow them. They always work together to shape you into what God intended you to be. Philippians chapter 2 verses 12 through 16 frames it this way. Continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill His good purpose. Do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault 
in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life.